Good morning. morning. Welcome one and all to our morning worship here at the Victoria Center of Cainshaw Methodist Church. I have one notice uh, which you cannot have missed because on your seats there is a note and an envelope on our KMC gift day, day, which is going to be held on Sunday the 14th of July. Please could you take the notice away with you uh, and the envelope uh, which will tell you all about the gift day. You are all invited to continue in fellowship after the service when tea or coffee and biscuits will be served from the hatch at the back of the church. Shall we now have a period of quiet where we prepare ourselves for the service, after which I will lead you in the prayer of preparation. Shall we say together, Father God, grant me a vision of compassion for others. I thank you for family life and all that that means to me. May I reach out in love to my neighbours and live in a way that reflects your love and ensures that all human life can flourish. Help me to share the love I receive from you, so that all may live peacefully together. Amen. And so I now welcome our own minister, the Reverend John Hayes, to lead us in worship. Well, welcome everyone. It's really good to see you this morning and uh, we're greeted by God's gracious sunshine and brightness and, uh, and it's good to be together and to celebrate and to worship. We're continuing our journey through um, the story of Genesis um, and we'll be reflecting on that later on. Um, and the focus today, uh, we'll be thinking about God's blessing. It's a two-parter, really, because we'll be thinking about God's blessing next week as well. Um, but um, but it, we'll be thinking about God's blessing through uh, the life and work of Abraham and Sarai, or Abra as they became Abraham and Sarah. So it's good to see you. We're here to worship together. We come to bring everything we have and everything we are in our worship, and we aim uh, it, together to be conscious and to reaffirm God's blessing amongst us here today. So our opening hymn is hymn 494, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing, hymn 494.
And so, now, so now in a time of prayer, we're going to offer our prayers to God. Um, we're going to include within that a prayer from Pete Gregg uh, to recognise that this is Father's Day. So uh, let us all pray together. Gracious and loving God, as we gather together, we just want to say how amazed and wonderful your world is and how amazed we are by uh, our, our part in it, the way that we exist, the, the way that we came into being. We wonder at your creation around us and give you thanks for all that we see and all that we feel and all that we experience. We just want to say that you are a wonderful God. You are a wonderful Father. And through you, God, we recognize and can see your love in and through the life of Jesus, for which we give thanks and receive the blessings of you through the Holy Spirit in our lives here today, in this place, in this world, as part of our community. Help us to understand more about your blessings for us and help us to be prepared to live in those blessings. We recognize the challenges of our lives. Although we can recognize and see so many things to be grateful for, there are times when we just take things for granted and we ask you to forgive us for that. There are times when we think we know the best way and it's not consistent with your way. So we ask your forgiveness for that. And there are times, too, when we are just plain selfish, when we seek our own needs over other people's, and we ask your forgiveness for that as well. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for all of those uh, things that we've mentioned, and we thank you, too, for the way in which, for those who truly say they're sorry, your forgiveness reaches out. So we pray that you will help us to be those who live in your blessing today, now and always. Amen. And we pray today for dads, for new dads and granddads and stepdads and adoptive dads and solo dads, for baldy ones and beardy ones, for skinny ones and cuddly ones, for dads who tell terrible jokes, and dads who dance to YMCA. For dads who know how to fix things, and dads who just pretend they know how to fix things. Father to the fatherless, we pray for those for whom this day is sadder than it's happy. For those who feel they have failed. For those who are grieving children they never had. For those missing their dads, or their children, even more than usual. Father God, at a time of so much pain, when so many dads are distant, absent, or even abusive, we lean into your ever-present love and healing. You are faithful and kind, especially for those of us orphaned, abandoned, and hurt. For even if my father abandons me, as the psalmist writes, the Lord will hold me close. Father of mercy, heal our many hurts and restore the dignity, integrity and centrality of fatherhood in our families, in our communities and in our nations. As the Apostle Paul says, I kneel before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name, and I pray that you may know love. And finally, Lord, for all those poor souls everywhere who forgot that this is Father's Day, we would ask that you bless them in your abundant grace and manifold mercy with the discovery of chocolate and half-decent cards in a surprisingly well-stocked convenience store. Amen. So Diane's going to come and read our first reading. The first reading is from Philippians 1, verses 3 to 11. Paul's prayer for his readers. I thank you, my God, 
for you every time I think of you. And every time I pray for you all, I pray with joy because of the way in which you have helped me in the work of the gospel from the very first day until now. And so I am sure that God, who began this good work in you, will carry it on until it is finished on the day of Christ Jesus. You are always in my heart, and so it is only right for me to feel as I do about you. For you have all shared with me in this privilege that God has given me, both now and that I am in prison, and also while I was free to defend the gospel and establish it firmly. God is my witness that I am telling the truth when I say that my deep feeling for you all comes from the heart of Christ Jesus himself. I pray that your love will keep on growing more and more, together with the true knowledge and perfect judgment, so that you will be able to choose what is best. Then you will be free from all the impurity and blame on the day of Christ. Your lives will be filled with the truly good qualities which only Jesus Christ can produce for the glory and praise of God. Amen. And the second reading comes from Genesis 12, verses 1 to 10. God's call to Abram. The Lord said to Abram, leave your native land, your relatives and your father's home and go to a country that I am going to show you. I will give you many descendants and they will become a great nation. I will bless you and make your name famous so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those who curse you. And through you, I will bless all the nations. When Abram was 75 years old, he started out, started out from Haran, as the Lord had told him to do, and Lot went with him. Abram took his wife, Sarai, and all the slaves they had acquired in Haran, and they started out for the land of Canaan. When they arrived in Canaan, Abram travelled through the land until he came to the sacred tree of Moreg, the holy place at Shechem. At that time, the Canaanites were still living in the land. The Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, This is the country that I am going to give to your descendants. Then Abraham built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. After that, he moved on south to the hill country, east of the city of Bethel, and set up his camp between Bethel on the west and I on the east. There also he built an altar and worshipped the Lord. Then he moved on from place to place, going towards the southern part of Canaan. Praise be to God. Thank you. Thank you, Diane, for those readings from God's Word. Uh, we sing our next hymn. Uh, it's a new hymn. And I'm hoping that the tune's relatively familiar. Uh, hymn 463, Deep in the Shadows of the Past, Far Out from Settled Lands. Hymn 463. <laughs>
Well, as we hear the bells ring out, what a week it's been. Started off last weekend, didn't it, with Bath coming oh so close to a, uh, what would have been a momentous uh, victory in the Rugby Premiership. Uh, the Euros kicked off um, the other night with Germany doing what Germany does uh, in pole position already. Um, Alan Bates, the post office campaigner, was um, recognised and awarded with a knighthood. Uh, the, all the, um, most of the manifestos were launched for the political parties. And we also heard about the sad death of Michael Mosley, many of whom were, might have been connected uh, in a number of different ways uh, to that man. And if you've been following the book of Genesis this week in the daily readings that we have, which I know some of you are doing, so much has been happening, hasn't it? Here we have Abram in our reading. He gets called by God and he's told he's going to be blessed and be a blessing to all the future generations. Well, you know, if that had been me, I'd have been, I'd have been running like a mile away from that sort of stuff. All that responsibility uh, without knowing what was going to happen. And anyway, he packs up with all of his family and heads off with sanction from the Lord and claims Canaan. And as so often has happened, famine moves across the land and moves he moves off to Egypt and this is a risky business and so they plan their approach he's got his wife with him and he's convinced that his wife when he goes into Egypt is going to be uh, it's going to be taken and uh, and so their plan because it's Abram's and Sarai's plan is for her for them to claim that they are sister and brother so they claim that they are sister and brother, and she's still taken, and ends up, because she's very attractive, remember, she's very attractive, I don't know whether you worked out how old she was at this stage, but she was 74. So, all of you who are 74 or less, um, or even 74 and a bit older, the Bible said that she was very attractive, Sarai, and she was taken by this great ruler to be uh, probably an extra wife, I mean, we'll, we'll put that there, it doesn't say it, but... Uh, very attractive and so she was taken and then and then interestingly when pharaoh finds out what does pharaoh do well he seems to do the right thing doesn't he, he says oh this was a mistake and uh, if i'd have known i wouldn't have done this by the way go and and is he angry well it doesn't seem so because he blesses them all with gifts and uh, with money and off they head Maybe that's something to do with, you. I don't know whether they thought Sarai and Abraham, Abraham were unlucky because of all of the plagues that were around, and they seemed to start something for Egypt and plagues associated with the people of Israel. So now Ab Abraham and Lot split up uh, because of their overcrowding in the lands they were in. Lot goes off to Sodom, Abraham settles down by the Oaks of Mamre, which we keep coming back to. Lot gets caught up in war, and like so many who get caught up in war, gets taken away and is captured. And Abram sets out to rescue him. And this meets with the blessing of King Melchizedek. Notice the blessing is surrounded by bread and wine, which we will do today. God then settles his covenant with Abram, and there's still, he promised children, and there's still no children. How can there be blessing for future generations if there's no children? And then Abraham and Sarai took the legacy of this into their own hands. Abraham, who's now 86, by the way, I just keep putting the ages in there so you're up with this, has sex with Hagar, an Egyptian slave, to have a child, and is sent on, she's sent on away by Sarai. And the Lord sends her back, I'm not having any of that, with the instruction to name the child Ishmael. And then there's this promised covenant with Abram. He's 99 and Sarai, uh, sorry, he's 100 and, Abra, and Sarai's 99 and they, they change their names to Abraham and Sarah. And the sign of this covenant, the sign that's going to be celebrated by all the males in Abram's family and connected places is circumcision. Um, everybody is circumcised. And then uh, this promised child that keeps getting talked about is greeted with laughter of disbelief from both Sarah, Sarah and Abraham. And then God wonders whether in all of this to share this future imminent dis decision about the destruction of Sodom with Abraham and Abraham, because Ab he knows what Abraham's like and, 
Abraham negotiate, starts negotiating for Sodom's future, based on the fact that surely you wouldn't destroy it if there were 50 good souls, 50 righteous men. And in the end, the negotiation ends up with 10 righteous men. If you can find 10 righteous men, we'll save Sodom. The depraved Sodom was visited by the angels, and Lot welcomed them in, and the locals were not happy with this. I mean, let's be frank, what the locals wanted to do was take these men and rape them, these angels. Um, and, and Lot sort it, tried to sort this problem out. This is, again, one, another human being trying to resolve a problem, s tries to sort this problem out by offering his daughters instead of the angels to this angry mob outside. But the angels have a different plan, and they strike the threatening men with blindness. Lot's then told by the angels to round up his family as far as they can to save them. They hear, but they don't join in when they escape. Sodom and Gomorrah are destroyed, and of course Lot's wife is turned into a pillar of salt. At the conclusion of all of this drama, you think, what could possibly happen now? And Lot's daughters um, have sex with uh, their father in order to conceive children, and they become the Moabite and the Ammonite peoples, peoples born in shame. And then Abraham and Sarah moved to the Negev. They pull the same she's my sister game with King Abimelech and that they played in Egypt. God protects Sarah through speaking out to Abimelech in a dream who gives Abraham and Sarah more goodies, you know, more animals, more silver and land to settle on. And then, and then finally, at long last, the miracle happens and Isaac is born. And Sarah sings of a blessing with laughter. Sarah then gets Abraham uh, to send Hagar and Ishmael away, and they are banished. And God rescues Hagar and Ishmael in the wilderness, saves them, and commits them to their future. Abraham does some covenanting with Abimelech over land and animals and ends up in the land of the Philistines. And then Abraham is told by God to offer Isaac as an offering to God. Here we finish the week. This is the star turn. So he sets off to Moriah with Isaac and helpers to kill his son. Just, just, just think about this. this. All of this promised blessing and all of the things that they've been waiting for, for all of these years, and the first thing that God, that, uh, God has asked I, um, uh, Abraham to do with Isaac is to take him away and offer him as a sacrifice. We know he's reasonably sentient and quite old because he's old enough now, is Isaac, to understand what a sacrifice is. So just as the awful deed is to be done, God stops the sacrifice of Isaac, as Abraham apparently has demonstrated his faith in this test. And once again, God promises Abraham that he will be blessed. Now, all I want to say to you is that's just happened in one week, okay? That's one week of reading, of reading, Genesis, of reading part of Genesis. Wow. Wow. But what's fascinating about this, not necessarily, it's not so much what's happened, but how many questions are raised by these stories of Abraham and Sarai and then as they become Abraham and Sarah. It raises so many questions and thoughts and challenges. The loss of life, the rape and the incest, what's going on there? The treatment of women and children and the way in which God tests. I, you, 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 you just imagine that people of those days, PTSD would have been very common. Post-traumatic stress. It's it just, you cannot imagine what it must have been like. But it was a time as well, at the same time as this, where blessings and hopes were fulfilled. We've asked if people would like to join in with our exploration of Genesis by offering the opportunity to leave any questions or comments uh, on a sheet. Well, I was given the sheets after last week's service, and um, there, were, there were no comments or questions. Obviously, it hadn't been exciting enough up until that point. Well, it is exciting now, so it's at the back, and to be fair, somebody asked me a question this week, and I've added that question onto the sheet. But it's an empty page. I don't believe it's an empty page. I don't believe it's an empty page. I believe we've got questions and comments about what's going on here. Why does God work in this way? Why are the stories told like this? 
How, what on earth did they mean? Such a wide-ranging experience. Why? How did the chickens get on with the foxes on the ark? I mean, how did that work in practice? Or why does God choose to destroy a city? Is that the only way to, for love and redemption? It's, these are really deep and meaningful questions that challenge us and challenge us today. And I wonder, I wonder whether there's a question you have that you would like to share. And if you do, please add them to the sheets and we'll pick them up and carry them over. Uh, we're on again next week. We're on to Genesis. If you're bored by Genesis by now, I'm sorry, we've still got two more weeks. We're, we're kind of halfway through and uh, we get on to some more exciting blessings next week. But, uh, but anyway, these things that people do, it seems clear that the reality of life for people in those days was a life of uncertainty, of hardship, of brutality, and of death, pain and injury. And you can understand perhaps then why what looks to us to be outright deceit, trickery and manipulation seem to be sometimes the only ways in which those who had less power were able to survive. But in all of this, it seems that God somehow keeps repeating that Abraham and Sarai in this story and their family are the focus for the fulfillment of God's blessing to humankind. A sense that in this story there's an underlying trust in God for God's greater purposes. Last week we heard about Noah and the rainbow and we heard that about being a sign of God's blessing and a blessing for the future. A future that is shared. Well, the word that was used last week was one of partnership a partnership of love, a covenantal blessing. Of course, this story of blessing, this blessing for future generations, is a story that's connected to us today, here, now. We are part of that future blessing. We are far, part of the future blessing that was promised to Abraham and Sarai all those years ago through generations of those who eventually followed Jesus as we do today. So we can thank God that through our connection with Abraham and Sarai, we are part of the blessing story and a part that's connected to the blessings of God for the future. Now, some of you might say, well, how am I blessed by God? Well, we are blessed by God in all sorts of different ways, but one of the key ways is a recognition that we are blessed by God's constant love. We are blessed by being able to live in that love, and even though it calls me into places and times and occasions when I will be challenged and tested, I can live in that constant love. We're blessed by this world and this creation and all, and the people that's in it, and the people uh, that you know, and the people you share your lives with. You're blessed by food and shelter, by health and community, and all of these blessings we, can, we say come from God. We believe come from God. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. So the question really is, uh, for us to be aware and conscious of our blessings from God today as part of our lives. And then the other part of that is that because we are blessed, we are called to be those people who share in the blessing of others. How do we bless other people through the life, through our lives? And one of the ways is through our lives together as a church. Love and care, prayer and support, make a difference, help those in need. We share God's love through actions and our words. We share the good news of Jesus and the difference and the blessing that Jesus has made in our own lives. One of the challenges for us, though, is reflected in the Genesis story time and time and time again. 
the people of God, faithful people, who seem to constantly want to take it into their own hands. They want to solve all the problems because it seems to them as though unless they do that, it's not going to get done. But time and time and time again, they are shown that God has a way. I guess being open to God's blessing and being open to sharing God's blessing says that we have to depend solely on God's blessing for the way forward. Perhaps it might help us to listen to one of God's most faithful servants, but also one who often sought to force the way himself, St. Paul. In Paul's letter to the Philippians, he speaks of how he is responding to the blessings of God, giving thanks to God and his fellow followers of Christ. He, he comments about how the Philippians have been blessed through sharing the good news, the gospel, and being blessed through the sharing of the gospel with others. And he's been blessed through their care and concern for him and their care and concern for other people. Kind of a, a sense in that Philippian reading of overflowing love, blessings that overflow and overflow, a harvest of righteousness and blessing through Jesus. Next week, we'll be reflecting on the blessings of God through the story of Jacob. And if it's as an action-packed week as it has been so far, then there will be many opportunities for each one of us to land on a story or an occasion or a phrase or a word that encourages us or challenges us or makes us think. All of these things are possible. So amid the conflict, whether great or small, do not be discouraged because God is over all. Count your many blessings. Angels will attend. Help and comfort give you to the journey end. Count your many blessings. Name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Amen. Now we're going to have a look at two videos. We're going to have a look at a short video on Genesis and then we're going to... Like everyone else, God calls Abraham to be a partner. And Abraham says yes. God promises Abraham land and a huge family. He's even promised that the whole world will be blessed because of him. But Abraham struggles to believe in these promises. He is old, has no children or home, and has many struggles that leave him doubting in God. But God is faithful and keeps protecting Abraham, working with him, even when Abraham makes mistakes. Over time, Abraham learns to trust God and starts to become the blessing he is called to be. And eventually, every promise God made him comes true. What can we learn from the story of Abraham? Abraham. One of the things we learned in the pandemic was um, we were surprised, I think, by how different things emerged and different things came. And one of the things that came was um, uh, a kind of a reflection on uh, understanding how much we were blessed by God. And so we're going to, you can listen, you can join in, you can sing, you can listen, but we're going to listen to uh, the blessing, which, um, uh, which was and came and arose out of uh, those times together. Hiya, my name's Becky George. Welcome to our Makaton UK Blessing. Face toward you 
To know God's blessing and to share God's blessing is the call on our lives in whatever ways we do that. Amen. We're going to offer a, a prayer, an offertory prayer, and, uh, and then we're going to share in some prayers of intercession. When we share in our prayers of intercession, there are no responses, but I want to encourage you to have on your hearts the people who you know and the people who are close to you. Um, the concerns you have uh, around this world and around our nation and around our community and town, um, and hold them on your hearts uh, as we share in those prayers together. So let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for all the blessings that you give to us, and we recognize as we offer to you uh, our, the, 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 the gifts that you have given. Uh, we offer them to you in love, and we offer them to you, and we pray that you will bless them and your love will bless them, and that those gifts that are offered uh, today and during the week and month and uh, in all sorts of different ways, that you will take them and make a difference. And we ask that you will bless those gifts in their sharing, as you bless our prayers in their sharing too. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So gracious and loving God, when we forget your promises and live our lives as though you are not here, relying on ourselves, forgetting your love for us, forgetting to be thankful, Speak to us, challenge us, nudge us, help us to remember your promises. When we laugh at your promises, loving God, and live our lives in passive acceptance of the things that happen around us, laughing at the idea that you can change them, surprise us, activate us, give us new vision, and help us to take your promises seriously. When we are possessive of your promises, loving God, and live our lives as though they are for us alone, hugging them to us in our innermost selves, unwilling to share them with others, commission us, inspire us, open us out. Help us to tell others of your promises. When we need the assurance of your promises, loving God, and live our lives in darkness and despair, overwhelmed by pain and sorrow or guilt, needing to know your presence with us, reassure us, comfort us, and strengthen us. Help us to experience the power of your promises. Loving God, you have promised that you will be with us always and everywhere. You have promised us that we can be one with you in Jesus if we but trust in you. You have promised us new and abundant life. Help us to rely on these promises, to live by them and to share them with others. In the name of Christ, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> As we, uh, but just before we sing our next hymn, uh, which is a preparation for our sharing together in bread and wine, I just want to remind you that all those who are seeking to follow Jesus are welcome to share in bread and wine. If you'd, you'll be invited by stewards to come forward. If you'd like to come forward, you can receive bread and wine. If, if you want to come forward and just have a blessing, that's okay too. And of course, you can remain in your seats as well. Um, as well, uh, we, we believe strongly in prayer and the power of prayer in this church. Um, a lot of focus is around and, uh, and today there'll be an opportunity if you would like to go and uh, as we share in communion together, if you want to go and have a prayer, um, our, our prayer communion team will be uh, in the prayer hub, which is if you go out of the door and turn right on the left hand side, the hub, and um, they'll be there and able to offer prayer with you if you would like that today. So we sing our hymn 574, the Charles Wesley hymn, Because You Have Said, Do This For My Sake.
standing, please, if you're able. And we'll, we'll share in the words of our peace prayer together. As we share peace together, we say together, Gracious God, we open our hearts, our minds, our bodies and our souls to receive your blessing and we give you thanks. We give thanks for all the rich blessings we have received from you and from the generations that have gone before us. Help us through the example of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit to be a blessing to one another. Help us to be a blessing in your world. Give us your peace. Help us to share your peace. Amen. Please sit down. In the days before Jesus was crucified, he saw many people like us, hungry for the words of life, hungry to share the bread of life, hungry to find purpose. His heart went out in compassion for us, and he asked us to do the little we could. Jesus graciously and joyfully took the offering of a small child, which could have been us, five loaves and two fish, he paused, lifted his face to heaven, and gave thanks to God for the generous offering of this small heart. He blessed, broke, and gave it to his disciples to share, and more than 5,000 people were fed by the miracle of this small offering. Today, Jesus invites us to be blessed in the same way and to share the blessing of the bread of life. Let us therefore throw off everything that hinders us. Let us continue on our journey with Christ, encouraged, keeping our eyes on him. Jesus, send your Holy Spirit upon us and bless these gifts of bread and wine. Help us to receive your healing and forgiveness and make us whole. Let us continue on our journey with Christ, encouraged, keeping our eyes on him. Jesus, send your Holy Spirit upon us. Bless these gifts of bread and wine. Help us to receive your healing and forgiveness and make us whole. And we, we say, say together, together may, may we become for you your body, rooted in your love, reaching out to the world until your kingdom comes. Amen. Bread is broken for us and for the world. Christ is the bread of life. The cup of salvation is for us and for the world. He gave his life that we might have love. So come, the meal is ready. Rejoice in the blessing of our salvation and our fellowship with one another.
now with the blessing of God, now that you have shared in this meal, a meal prepared for all people, go and live in that blessing now and always. So now that you have shared in this meal, a meal prepared for all people for all times, may you go in the name of Christ and be blessed by God now and <coughs> always. Amen. <coughs>
Now you have shared in his meal, bread and wine given for you. May you know the blessing of Christ now and always. Amen.
you have shared in bread and wine in memory of the love of Jesus Christ. May you be blessed in that love now and always. Amen. <coughs> And so we share in our closing prayer. Gracious God, we thank you that you have blessed us with the bread of life and with the cup of salvation. Strengthen us in your service until we, who have known the blessing of your love, see you face to face in your kingdom through Jesus Christ. Our closing hymn is hymn number 81. Now thank we all our God, hymn 81.
go with the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and may that blessing remain with us now and always. Amen. Thank you.